Um, so y'all, good morning, good morning. We we will be talking about getting over the fear of bragging. I know that when it comes to you being able to talk about your accomplishments and all the great things that you guys are doing in the workplace, you can feel a little bit scared to like really show that off, right? So what I want to do this morning is I want to really talk about um, how to get over that fear. So I want to be able to show you guys what you really miss out on when you don't really want to lean in on these great things that you are doing at work. So I will say this, what I want to talk about first is I want to talk about what it is costing you to not really boldly speak about the results and the successes and the accomplishments that you bring forth at work. You know, when you are starting to face this fear of, I don't want to just sound like I'm trying to just uh, boast about myself, it is costing you money. OK, because sometimes you can find yourself doing a really, really, really great job at work. Right. And you can sometimes assume that people know the work that you do and they don't. So that's why it's really, really important for you guys to not be afraid. The, the one thing that I really want to stress to you guys is that when you do not feel sure, for one, about the results and the accomplishments that you bring forth in your career, it can cost you money. Right. Because like I was saying before, is sometimes you can start to feel like they should know these great results. Right. Or sometimes you feel like I'm doing a great job. So the people that I work under, they should be able to see these great results. But it doesn't work like that. Um, and so that's why it's important for you guys to be able to get comfortable talking about your expertise and the results that you bring forth. And I want to talk about where this fear of I don't want to sound like I'm trying to just pump myself up. Like, where does this come from? I think a, a lot of us did not really see a lot of healthy examples of exactly what it looks like to share your accomplishments and your results. A lot of us was taught to just be real modest. When you find yourself in that trap of, I don't want them to think that I think I'm all that, you really put yourself in the box and you really keep yourself hidden. They may be able to see to some sort those results, but the actual impact that you bring forth in your role, they don't know that. They do not know what it means to day to day that aids them in their success. And I think, like I was saying, a lot of us have not seen great examples. Right? And a lot of us was told, you know, you should not share the, the great things that you do because you don't want other people to think that you think that you're all that. And when you're working in, in corporate America, that is not how it works, okay? It is so important for you to be vocal about what it is that you do, which also goes back to is so important for you to know the value and the impact that you bring forth in your role. That is crucial. And so when you can start to get clear on the actual um, results and the part of the success that you play, Right now, you won't lean on things like I have to just keep overworking myself in order to succeed. You don't have to lean on not having any clear boundaries because people think the way to advance your career is just I have to be all. No, the way that you advance your career is when you get clear on the part of the success that you play there. Right. And so I want you guys to really start to really lean on. Right. Not thinking about what else more do you have to do in order to advance? I want you to know the impact of what you have already done, right? And not being afraid to share what that is. If you are one in your career where you find yourself secure about your skills, right? Or just about who you are, you will forever struggle with being able to express the value that you have. A lot of the clients that, that I work with, that is their struggle, right? I don't know how to express the actual value that I have, right? And that can be a huge <laughs> bottleneck because there is, it's almost you find like yourself being so frustrated because you know that you are doing great things, right? You know that you bring forth results, but it's like, Alicia, I don't know how to get them to actually see it. In reality, what needs to happen is you need to embrace that great work. You need to be able to embrace the results that you bring forth. You have to be able to get comfortable in who you are. And this is what stops a lot of people from being able to advance their career, that they have not yet been able to embrace.
great. It's like, man, I do great work. Because I think it's ingrained in our mind that we tend to automatically know first what it is that we do wrong. That's just like a, a automatic, right? <laughs> it is easier for us to lean on our weak areas. It is like, it is just easier for us to lean on those gaps than it is for us to stand bold in what we do good. In order for you to get past the fear of, I don't want to sound like X, Y, and Z, get past that and start to really... Um, reframe your mind and understand that, look, I have to be able to sit in my expertise and own the results that I bring forth. Because if you don't, what tends to happen is that you leave your expertise and your value in the hands of somebody else. And so now you find yourself as this kind of just sitting duck, meaning that now I have to just sit here and wait and hope that I be picked or that there is somebody here who sees this great job that I'm doing and you keep yourself hidden. And at this time, you start seeing everybody else around you with, with less experience. They start to advance and grow. And you're like, how in the world can they advance and grow when I have more experience than them? It's because they're more vocal. Is that they don't mind being seen, but you don't want to be seen because sometimes we just tend to train ourselves into thinking that if I just be quiet, that's not going to make them so bad or they won't think. And this is something that I want you guys to get. You have to be bad. I don't want them to think. First of all, don't even consider yourself with trying to control the thought of everybody else. That job is exhausting. <laughs> Don't even try to consume yourself with trying to control what everybody else thinks about you because that in itself is a full-time job. The important thing is to be able to understand that, hey, I am here to advance. I don't think, I don't think anybody shows up to work for the most part, right? There, there is a goal or there, or there should be a goal why you are showing up to work every day. There should be some kind of goal as to why you are showing up every day. In those moments when you feel that fear of, it could be shame, it could be fear, anything, right? So in the in those moments of fear, when you're like, I'm scared to either ask for the things that I need, or or I'm afraid to, to, um, to express to them the results that I bring forth, think about, does that mindset serve your goals? And I think if people would think about their goals more than their fear, they'll be able to advance further. But And I'm not saying that the fear won't be there. The question is, is will you allow the fear to stop you? And I think a lot of people allow their fear to stop them and they don't remember what they said that their actual goals was. So when you do um, have yourself in a space to where you are afraid to even talk about your accomplishments or your successes, right? That will damage your self-esteem. Now, it's already, <laughs> you guys uh, are probably already in environments. You know, I always say, you know, it is important for you to understand the value that you bring forth, but it is also important for you to work in spaces to where they actually, they actually acknowledge that, and a lot of them don't. So if you are in your career to where you don't even acknowledge the value that you have, and now you you have to work in a space to where they don't even acknowledge the value that you have, where does that leave you? A lot of times that leaves you with self-doubt. A lot of times that will leave you with, with you not being sure of your expertise. A lot of times that will leave you feeling like they are your only option, but it should not be that way. And that's why it's so important for you to even start to create your own self just validation to where you can own it, even if they don't, because this is the thing, they see it. Now, like I was saying before, they may not see it to the extent that they should see it, but they see it. And then this is what happens a lot of times when folks find themselves being, being just completely overworked. They know who they can throw all of this extra work on and won't say nothing. They they know that. But I want you to start to brand yourself in your workplace as not as this work mule or this workhorse or 
It's like, don't have this brand on you as some, you know, oh yeah, she going to say yes. If anybody going to say yes, it's her. <laughs> don't brand yourself as that. I want you to be able to brand yourself as somebody that is able to solve problems and also as somebody who knows the value that they have and is not afraid to ask for what it is that they want. But again, people tend to get afraid of, I don't want to be able to ask for a raise or this or that because they go back in their mind in this mode of they will think X, Y, and Z. But why is it that you find yourself more concerned about what they think than what you think? Again, it goes back to self-esteem. It goes back to how you see your worth. It goes back to what you think you are worthy of and what you think you deserve. Because it's one thing to tell yourself that I deserve to have a job that I enjoy and that I am paid well in. It's another thing to, to actually take the action steps to have that. And so people will tend to, to tell themselves, this is what I deserve. But their action does something completely different. So I want you to be able to even ask yourself by the way that you show up at work or the way that you stand in your expertise. What does that tell you about what you think that you deserve? And I myself, yeah, I've had to do, I've had, I've had to do this of my own career. Now that I own my own business, I've had to do this. I'm constantly having to check in with myself and make sure that the actions that I take is in alignment with the goals that I say that I have. And a lot of us have not been taught to boldly operate and own what it is that we do. A lot of us have been taught to just be quiet. A lot of us have been taught to just go to work. But nobody has really taught us how to be able to own our expertise, how to know the part of the success that we play in, and how to not be afraid to ask for what it is that we need. Because a lot of people tend to be afraid of the word no. If you are afraid of the word no, and, and when I say afraid of the word no, what I mean is that you will not ask for something because you think that you will hear no. A lot of you guys have the wrong perspective about the word no. The word no is a beautiful thing. The word no is a compass, okay? That word no is a huge like alarm. And so I want you guys to refrain how you see no and stop being afraid to ask for what it is that you need or even pursue what it is that you need because you're afraid of hearing the word no. Even in your career, if you ask for a raise and they tell you no, awesome. Because two things have just now showed up. One thing is, hey, they probably cannot handle or even reach or meet the expectations that I have. Or two, there is some gap that needs to be filled here, meaning that there is something that I need to do in order to receive a yes. So now it gives you something to either work towards or it gives you something to walk away from. The word no gives you something to either work towards or it gives you something to walk away from. But if you would have ne never had that conversation, you would have not known where you stand or what choice you need to make. So me, I'm not afraid to hear the word no, because I know that there are times when I need to hear the word no. So I know what step I need to actually make next. And so I want you to even reframe the way that you think about the word no. And a lot of you, if you would have heard the word no years ago in your career, in your job, you would have been able to move on and not have some kind of false hope or false expectation. Don't be afraid to think about it, to, to think, or don't even be afraid to have conversations. I'm very, very big, right? I, in your career, your advancement is not in you overworking yourself. Your advancement is you being able to have effective conversations. You being able to ask for what it is that you need and you being able to not be afraid that they will think X, Y, and Z. The more conversations you can have in your career, the faster your career will grow. And I don't want you guys to think that, oh, you know, if there are certain things that I want, almost start to think that they won't allow me to have the things that I, that I want. First of all, this is your career. It isn't about what they will allow you to have. Remember, you are grown. It's about whether or not they can meet your expectations. 
Can you meet my expectations? Remember, you are a grown man. You 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 grown. So it's not necessarily about what it is they will allow you to have. But what it is, is can they meet my expectations? And are they able to serve you in the way that you need to be served? And if you understood and realized why is it important for you to not be afraid to ask for what it is that you need or not to be afraid to ask for or even share the the, uh, the results, you will understand that the better they serve you, the better you can serve them. But you'll find yourself burnt out in your career when you are the only one serving. And people think being able to ask for things at work. They feel like, oh, they will think that I am just greedy. No, they will understand. You will set the tone that, hey, if I do the thing that I was hired to do and I exceed those expectations, I expect you to exceed my expectations. Remember, this is a partnership. And I know I know a lot of y'all are not used to having this kind of talking, right? Because a lot of us was just taught to just, girl, do whatever you got to do, girl, to just keep your job, right? And I definitely believe in you being able to work hard. I am a firm believer of doing everything in excellence. Didn't say everything had to be perfect, but I do believe in operating at a spirit of excellence, right? So I'm not saying that this, this live stream is about just go to work and just make all these asks and just do nothing. No, I'm saying is that make sure that just as much as you are serving your career, that your career is serving you back. That is super important. And this is why people feel burnt out. This is why they feel frustrated. They feel unfulfilled. They're not happy. And that is because they are serving more in their career than their career is serving them back. And a lot of times people do not have what it is that they need in their career because they will not ask for it. They refuse to ask for it because they have, have trained themselves to believe that, hey, if something is for me, it's for me. And I do believe that to a certain extent. I do believe that to a certain extent that what is for you is for you. But when it comes to corporate America, you do not get what you deserve. You get what you ask for. And I'm not saying all companies are like that. But I will say with my chest that most are. When I say that most are, meaning that build their structures and, and their rules and the, this stuff is not built to put you first. It's not. Their structures, their rules, everything is built to put them first. And guess what? That's business. Okay, cool. So you need to take care of your business and be sure that you're putting yourself in a place of success. And it's not just about being successful in your role right now. Because we all know, especially over the last year, things, look, things can change in a moment. <laughs> you, you can find yourself with a job today and then tomorrow it's gone, right? So this is not just about you being successful, but it is about you being able to train yourself and know what needs to happen to where you are always in a place of success. I don't, and this is what people, a lot of people do is they make the mistake of, they only think about what is it that I can do or be to be successful in the role that I am in now. And your career goes so far beyond the job that you hold now, right? But it's about you being able to train yourself and be able to train yourself to set the tone with your employer. You train people how to treat you. And this starts in what? In the job search. This starts with you having to sit down with them and even find out what the job is about. You are training them at that moment how they need to deal with you. And so this is why it's so important. As you are going through that process, don't be afraid to ask tough questions. When I said tough questions, doesn't mean it has to be blunt or rude. Tough questions for one to make sure that you are about to invest your time and your skills into something that is going to bring back a return for you. Because you got to realize that your time is precious. Your skills are precious. Some skills cost you thousands of dollars, right? You, I mean, you find yourself with student loans out the wazoo. <laughs> You, you still still having to pay for skills, right? So these things are, you should see them as, they're jewels. They are precious. And so you should want to 
share your skills, right? Or even invest your times and your skills into a place, right? That is going to be worth your time. It's so important to not be afraid to ask the tough questions and not just have a mindset of, I'm just going to say whatever I need to say so they can hire me. No. Now, I do believe that when you are starting off, you do have to bend. Now, now when I say starting off, I mean just starting off from scratch. Like you are just now 21, 22. You, okay, there are some times when you do have to bend a little bit, right? Because you are just trying to get your feet wet. You just starting off in, in, in life and you don't really have too much to really stand on. But once you get to a point in your career where you are seasoned, where you have put the work in, where you have receipts and results and successes, you have been able to not just get skills, but you are now in a place to where you are able to just master your skills. You it comes to a point where it can't just be about, I got to say whatever I got to say, just so I can get the job. Because if you go in quiet, they will expect you to stay quiet. If you go in quiet, they will expect you to stay quiet. This is what happens a lot of time. That's why I think it's so important to be as authentic as you can, um, is that when it comes to people, they will have this mask going, right? Because the only focus is I need to get the job. The focus is not I need to be able to make sure that this, this role is in alignment with my goals, some people don't even have goals. And so the only goal at the time is just, I need to just get the job. And so people will just have on a mask and be whoever they need to be or say whatever they need to say just so they can get the job. And then when they get the job, right, and they slowly start to peel off that mask, right? And these people are like, oh, okay, you, who is this? Or you find yourself there for the first three, four months and you thinking, oh, what I need to do is just be able to just be as quiet because if I say anything that I don't want them to think again, going back to that infamous statement, I don't want them to think. And so you keep this statement ingrained in your mind every time you know that you should speak up or there's an idea that you want to share or you Always resort back to that. I don't want them to think X, Y, and Z. And that is what keeps on the mask. That is what keeps you hidden. That is what keeps you underpaid. That is what keeps you silent. That is what keeps you overworked. Because you're more focused on what they will think than what it is that you need. Because when you can work in a career and you are being paid the money that you <laughs> desire to be paid, you have the work schedule, you are not overworking yourself. It does not... It does not remove you all the way from the people and the things that you love. That's going to want to make you show up to work even the more. That will drive you to bring forth results even the more. So you understand that you being able to advocate for yourself and what you need is not just about me just having a whole lot of ask. But it's about me knowing that if I can get the things that I need, I'm going to be able to show up better and serve better and bring forth more results, which means more success for you. So I want you guys to remove yourself from feeling like, and this is something that a lot of people struggle with. And so what, what I want you guys to do is to be able to shift this mindset of feeling like, stop feeling like you are asking for too much. A lot of people will not ask for what they need because they feel like they're asking for too much. Now, I do not believe that all of your fulfillment comes from your job. I don't. It can't, it can't possibly come from that. You guys know me. I love the Lord. I think that, that your source of fulfillment <laughs> should come from him. <laughs> when I talk about being fulfilled in your career, I, I, what I'm talking about is you being able to have a career to where it is going to keep you in alignment with the life that you want. Because that's what I think your career should be. I think your career is about it being able to keep you in alignment with the life that you want. Your career should not take you from the life that you want, because if that's the case, that is not good. I believe that your career should keep you in alignment with the life that you want. It's not about you being able to get all your fulfillment from it, but it is about your career being able to serve in the capacity that it should be serving you in. But a lot of people will feel like, I, I think my, my expectations are too high. And I'm like, okay, so what are your, these expectations? And when they start to like list off expectations, I'm like, that's not, th those are not high expectations. 
those expectations are not just so far, oh, girl, no. Think about how much energy you give to your job. Think about how much time. Some people even think about their job off the clock. You are now at home, you are off the clock, you are done, and you're still either trying to work or you're still even like the thought of work is still there. You're still trying to solve the problems at work. Spend eight, nine, 10, 12 hours a day there. This thing that takes you away from your family, this thing that remove that will remove you away from the people and the things that you love. You don't think something that holds this much weight in your life? You don't think something that holds this much control, and I say control, meaning that it is something that you got to give time to. You don't think something that that you got to devote so much time to, you you, you don't think that you got a right to ask for something that takes so much out of you, something that you spend more time with than your family. And so you mean to tell me that you are supposed to operate in this area of life silently? Like how people say, the math, don't, it, it just... <laughs> Help me to understand something that has this much of a demand and and a hold on your life. You think that you are asking for too much. Again, it goes back to self-belief. It goes back to what you what do you think you really deserve? Not the things that are nice to say, but what is it that you really, really believe that you deserve? And the amount of fear is a good sign of what you think that you really deserve. And again, this is not just in your career, though the live stream is about your career. What I mean is that you can literally take this this mindset and apply it to every area in your life. In your relationships, being silent, not being able to speak up on the things that need to be said, not being able to set boundaries. It all goes back to, because it's one thing to not like something, it's another thing to realize that I don't deserve this. Because that, that's two separate things. Because <laughs> a lot of people don't like things that happen on their job. But it's, it's another thing to understand that I don't deserve this. People can get those emotions confused. Because you can think just because I don't like something, that means I, I automatically know that I don't deserve this. Because when you fully come into the concept of I don't deserve this, you take the action to remove yourself. And this is why it's so important important to not see your career as a as a one job thing it's so important for you to understand that you got options but when you feel like you don't have options you just settle because you've told yourself that i can't get nothing else than this or you have told yourself that you are not worth the work that is going to take to find something more aligned because it is going to take work But again, it goes back to that self-belief. It goes back to you being able to identify that you are worth the work. You are worth the sacrifice. Because I will say this, it takes more work to, to stay in spaces and to stay in environments that you are not being able to receive the respect that you want to receive or the pay. It takes more work to stir yourself up every morning and go to a job that you know you don't like, then it takes for you to put the work in to move towards something better. So there's work on both sides. You got to be able to decide what is the work that you want to invest your time in and what is the work that is going to um, allow you to see the most results. There's work on both sides because it takes work to to be able to sit in, in an office or at your job every day and have on a mask. That's work. So my friend, it's work on both sides. But the question is to ask yourself is what is it that you've told yourself that you deserve? This is questions that I've had to ask my own self. This is the self-work and thank the Lord (laughs) for the work that he has done in my mind and my heart. This is work that I've had to even do myself that your life 99% of the time is a result of the choices that you make. And that takes a a level of being self-aware. That takes you being able to be honest with yourself. And that takes you having a mindset that, hey, I have to to not just get beyond this, but I have to grow beyond this. Meaning that it's not about me just finding a new job. It's about me being able to do the work within myself so this will never happen again. So I need to grow beyond this mindset. 
<laughs> and this is the work that I do with, with a lot of my clients. It's not just about you finding a new job. I will help you find a new job, but we have to be able to get in and, and identify these blind spots and these gaps and see what is it that's causing you to make the decisions that you make. And I help my clients change their belief system, meaning that I help them to see and think beyond what it is that they thought that they deserve. Sometimes it just takes having a new perspective on things, you know, because I thought it's, oh, you know, Go back to school. You don't need another degree, friend. You need a new perspective. You need a new belief system. You need new confidence about yourself. That's what you need to, to be able to understand that, for one, you, you have the right to be able to ask for the things that you, you need. Let's start with that belief of if I ask for the things that I, I need, then they going to get mad. And I ain't no therapist, okay? But a, a, a lot of this stuff come from a lot of issues in our childhood. Especially if you were one, if you was one to where at home as a child, you know, like you there, there was never a safe space to express things. Or anytime you maybe have did express something that you didn't like or like, that that was always met with a, oh, girl, be quiet. It was always met with a, ugh. The other person was always either very frustrated with you or they was very upset with you or or anytime you maybe would ask for something that you need, that that was met with some kind of just, ooh, that can make you, you have now grown up to believe that every time you want something or need to ask for something, that it is inconvenience. A lot of this stuff is just stuff that, that we just got to be healed from in a new job ain't going to fix that. Going back to school, that's not going to fix that. And so you having to even grow up in environments like that. Now, I do believe as a parent, we should raise our kids. I do believe that as a parent, there are certain limitations that we should have on our child because it is our job to be able to lead them in the right way. But we also know that a, a lot of our parents, they did the best that they could. And, and that was the way that they was raised. And so this is just a cycle that gets passed down from child to child. It's just with, not saying that our parents are bad. My parents did the best that they could. But a lot of times we was taught to just be quiet and just shut your mouth up and just stay in your place. And a lot of y'all have that same mindset in your career. Shut your mouth up, stay in your place. Now, as a child, you weren't paying no bills. You was, if anything, a child made more bills. We didn't have no job. We, but in your career, you are making these people money. <laughs> are you saving these people money? There is an exchange happening here. You, they ain't doing you no favor when they hired you. They hired you to solve a problem. They hired you to solve a problem, but we are still in this shut your mouth up and just stay in your place mindset as if you don't have no ground, if you don't have, as if you don't have the right, like I said before, you're not a child. You are bringing something to the table. You solve a problem for them. And a lot of you guys not only solve the problem. You solve the problems that they hired you for and you solve the problems that they didn't hire you for. You exceeding the expectations and you still don't feel like you have the right to ask for what it is that you need because I don't want you guys to keep feeling like that every time you ask for something, one, you got to be scared. I don't want you to feel like you shouldn't have to beg for nothing in your career. Because you being able to advocate for yourself is not about you being able to get them to, or let me say this, it is not about you having to force them to give you anything. It's about you being able to know the value that you bring, make the ask that is going to allow you to serve as you should be serving, and then be able to, to evaluate, are you in, in an environment that can meet your expectation? Because when you're able to advocate for yourself. That's all that means is for you to be able to ask for the things that you need. And then you need to be able to think about, am I in a space that can meet my expectations? And if I'm not, no hard feelings. And that mindset alone is 
will will allow you right to understand and then this is what happens a lot of times a lot of you guys are stuck on thinking this these jobs are going to be your forever job and some jobs ain't going to be your forever job i say it all the time <laughs> some jobs you will learn and earn some jobs you will grow and go and so you have to be able to identify if your time is done and a great way to be able to identify if your time is done if they are not able to meet your expectations, especially when you are exceeding theirs. Again, this is business. No hard feelings. But it's about you being able to identify, right? Being able to identify. Can they bring me to my goals? Or if they're able to keep me in alignment with my goals, the quicker you understand this. Right. The faster you get this, the faster you will grow in your career and you will not waste time hoping they will change their mind. Because a lot of people waste time thinking, oh, I hope they change their mind. It's not about them <laughs> changing their mind. It ain't about that. It's about you honoring you. That's what it's about. Again, that is their company. They ain't got to change their mind. They don't have to change their mind, but you can change yours <laughs> and decide I don't want to be here no more, right? Because again, I, I look, y'all, I go, look, I'm, I'm one, I say it again, we not in pursuit for a dream job. This is about a dream life, about you being able to make choices on the career that you need to have that's going to support the life that you want because it does not matter if you get this great job and with this great job title and you're paid so well and you have no time to enjoy the life or you're so frustrated and you're so stressed out with your career that you don't have any time again to even enjoy your life so this is and it's not about you finding a perfect job because it's, it's always going to be something, y'all. It's going to be something. But I want to empower you that you have the choice to decide what you're going to put up with. Because you you have to put up with something. But I want to empower you to know that you got the choice to decide what you put up with. Whatever you have to deal with should not interfere with the life that you want. It shouldn't. Because I really believe, I believe that God has created us for more than, than, than just having to work. I'm sorry. Though work in your career does take up a lot of time, it's not your whole life. You should be able to have a career to where you can go home and shut off. Or to every Sunday, you don't start feeling anxiety because Monday morning, I got to wake up to a job that I don't want to go to. And so I got to struggle through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday, there is some excitement. But the only excitement that comes on Friday is knowing that I'm getting ready to be off. I just don't think that life was ordained to be lived that way. But hey, that's just me. And I know that a lot of what I say is not popular. A lot of the things that I say is not, oh, no, because we have been taught, girl, just be happy you got a job, girl. Just be happy you got a job. What's the problem? Can't you pay your bills? That's what we've been taught. Go to work, be quiet, stay in your place. No, that ain't the life I want. That, that ain't the life I'm striving for. Absolutely not. Because again, it goes back to your belief system. I believe that I deserve and that I'm worth more than that. Even, even the clients that I, I, I've worked with and the amazing opportunities they've been able to land only because they got clear on what it is they want. And this is, and this is what I help my clients with. I help you to get clear on what it is you want, not what it is that we got to mold you to be. So now you can be this perfect fit. And it's not about being a perfect fit. It's about you finding your fit. <laughs> It's about you being able to find your fit. But it's going to be hard for you to be able to find your fit when you don't even know what you want. And what happens is you will literally build your career based on what you think that you should do or this seems, this next step just seems like the right step to do. And you build your career on what's right, but it's not being built on what's right for you. And you find yourself in an endless cycle of, I'm not happy, I'm not fulfilled, I feel stuck. Yeah, because what are you building on, love? 
it's one thing to accept the things that you can get. It's another thing to accept something that you actually wanted. That's two separate things. But again, I'm going to keep saying this. It goes back to your, your belief. And, th- and this is cycles that we, we've all, like, even I've, I've, I've shared with you guys a lot of times. So many times I'm like, I'm able to spend time with God and I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm starting to ask God for things. And he'll say so clearly, the things that you say that you want, is this based upon what you think can how can I put it? It's almost like sometimes you can find yourself, you just tend to just go towards the things that seem possible for you. And you never get to the point to where you go after what you want. And that's how it was with God. I'm, I'm praying to God. I'm asking God about different things. And God is saying, are, is uh, the, uh, all these asks that you that you have, is this something that you really want? Or, or are these the things that you just think is just, you know, doable? And that's how you end up playing it small. When you only go towards, oh, yeah, I can get that. I don't know about that. But even though that is something that you really want. Mm. Because it's, for one, a lot of it is not wanting to put in the work. And then it's that fear of what if I don't get the thing that I really want. But, but, but the question is, who told you that that thing is something that you can't have? Where did that belief come from? And another thing is, why have you trained yourself to believe more in what you can't get versus you having more faith in what you can get. Where did that belief come from? And a lot of this does come from past disappointments. A lot of this does come from, you know, in times past, there was a time when you, there was a strong desire for something and it didn't go the way that you thought it should have went. All of that stuff can can really affect even the goals that you set, because you can set really, really safe goals. Just say that these goals are just, they're just safe goals. Hey, if I set this goal, I know this goal is, is something that I can hit. And so you feel that little small rush of, I was able to hit this goal, but it doesn't really last long because it was something that you really didn't even want in the first place. And so the thing that you really wanted that fear of, I don't think I can, even though there are like millions of people on the earth that have reached that goal, that have already been successful in what it is that you want, that have already been able to land the role that you want. But you told yourself that all of those people are more worthy than me. And that's not true. Then a lot of times it's just things, things that you've gone through in work, right? I told you I was in HR for over 10 years. The first seven years, right, of that was having to hire. And then the last few years was just talent management. So I I was in HR for over 10 years. Y'all, corporate can do a job on you, on your mindset, how you think about yourself, how you show up. And and this is why I do what I do, because I want to be able to show people how to navigate in corporate and stay true to yourself. So there are times that there are different, you know, let's say hurts or different experiences that you may have faced. And that alone can steal away the drive to really want to pursue anything else. You're like, child, what's the point? But again, you can't make your career about them. It has to be about you. Very small example. I went to Popeye's. No, it wasn't, it wasn't the healthiest thing, but... Um, me and my family just came from in out of town and I was hungry. My y'all, I hate going up to Popeye's because every time I go there, it's like it, it don't matter what city, what's the, they all root. They just root. Right. But I love these little new strawberry um biscuit rolls, right? I had to move past the fact that these people they they root. Okay, they they something else too. Okay, <laughs> they they always act like they never want to be at work. But I I had a goal in mind, and my goal was I wanted me some biscuits. Okay, so of course, as usual, they were they were they were rude. But 
right? I kept my mind focused on the goal. And this is what happens. Uh, and even your, your career, right? When you find yourself having to face different things that you necessarily don't like, stay focused on the goal. That goal could be, I want to be able to provide for myself a lifestyle for me and my kids or my family, whatever. Keep your mind focused on the goal. Again, because your career can't be about them. It got to be about you. Just like last night when I was to give me some food, I could not make my trip about the people who work there. <laughs> I had to make it about my food that I wanted. <laughs> so, so as I was in the drive through I did not think about, oh, these people rude. Every time I come in, they always rude. I, I thought about how good the rolls was going to taste in my mouth. That is what allowed me to, in, to just endure that time. So even in your career, right? But again, it's about you having to decide what you're going to deal with. Now, for me, them rolls was, they y'all, they awesome, and they hot with a little strawberry. Oh, so good. So for me, I decided that I'll, I am going to endure their bad attitudes, right? Because that, that role is just, it's, it's, it's amazing in your career. You get to decide what you will deal with. So even if you have experienced past hurt or even have uh, experienced past um, things that didn't go well, learn from them and start to identify what is it that I need to put in place to where I either don't have to face them or I don't have to let them affect me the way I did last time. Because at the end of the day, I tell y'all tell all the time, people going to be people, meaning everywhere you go, there will be people. So it is important for us to learn how to deal with different personality types, especially you guys are, are in a lead role or if you desire to move into one, you're going to have to be able to learn, especially how to deal with people. And I will say this, it is a lot harder to deal with people when you do not know how to deal with yourself. If you do not know how to manage you, it's going to be hard learning how to manage other people. you got to learn. And this is, this is what, what I, <laughs> I teach my clients, how to just navigate that space. But it first takes you knowing how to navigate you. It's hard to lead other people when you cannot lead yourself. And a lot of times what you think other people feel about you is a reflection of how you feel about yourself. Because you will say, they don't like me. That's because you don't like you. That emotion, that mindset, whatever you, this is the thing, y'all. This is what the Lord has shown me. You often will resort or you will base things around you based on your hurts, based on those areas where you don't feel strong in. You base how you respond to things on what you feel weak in. I'm telling y'all, I always thought that I always like when telling y'all I had a bad, let me walk into a room and y'all over there shoe showing. Oh, they talking about me. How do you know they're talking about you, Alicia? <laughs> but it was easier for me to believe that people were saying something bad about me other than them saying something good about me. And that went back to how I felt about myself. What you think other people think about you is often how you think about yourself. So once I came in, in the reality and started to feel certain areas, I had to just, God had to just transform me. I had to just work on these areas. When I started to change how I perceived about myself, my, the, the relationships around me got better. Because now I don't respond based off of my hurt. I respond, right? Because I desire to bring forth solutions, not problems. So I don't operate out of a space of confusion or defensiveness, but I operate out of a place of solutions. I'm not looking to have a problem or to start problems. I'm looking to solve them. Because I, I desire to be at peace with the people around me. That's what I desire. I don't, I don't like being in environments where stuff be tense and, oh, I don't like her. And that's not the way I live my life. Though I understand that everybody may not like me, but what does that got to do with me? You won't always be able to control.